Welcome to another edition of Mai Tai TV. This one is out of this world crazy because we are not in the Tiki Bar. We are not in the Headhunters Lounge. We're on tour. We are roaming the streets of I don't know where. We're in a forest somewhere. We're about to see the Coffee Cats. Somewhere in the swamps of Jersey. We are going to the Punk Rock Flea Market today and maybe interview some wrestlers. We are interviewing the Coffin Cats on today's episode. In particular, Tommy Coffin, who has returned to the band from a extremely long hiatus due to reasons that we are going to try to figure out. We are at a car show right now and you can hear Here. all this noise behind us. Just a bunch of muscle cars, a bunch of guys with small penises and they're big muscle cars. Oh, sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, is this going to be an awesome show? It's going to be an awesome show. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm George. This is it's Hambo, and we're live on Mai Tai TV at the Punk Rock Flea Market. We're at the back door because that's the only way we can get into this place. You look like you're the security guard. For lack of a better word, yes, I'm the back door asshole. What, I guess you should say. So you're the one who sneaks people in the back door and throws people out the back door. Kind I do, of sort I do of. both. I do both. Yeah, I I can be swayed, but I don't come cheap. How long have you been being, uh, they're coming the wrong way, you gotta bounce them out. No, no, this is exit only. Exit only. Unless you got like $20, $50 in my back pocket. Show me the restrooms. The restrooms are to, all the way to the front and to the left. Okay, thank you. Clearly this requires talent. Where did you get educated? Well, this is skilled labor for somebody yeah. like myself. Uh, I am a Temple graduate. <laughs> Obviously I'm using it uh, well. You can't come back in if you go out this way. What? I, got, I know, I I'm trying. It's tough. It's tough to you like. You got the wrong bracelet. You got to name drop somebody. I, I basically uh, I slept my way into this job. That's awesome. Where, where, what do you aspire to be when you grow up? Uh, I aspire to be a, a backdoor asshole at the Trenton Punk Rock Flea Market. Hi, everybody. I'm here with my friends from Little Punk People. We are at the Trenton Punk Rock Flea Market checking out all the awesome art and we couldn't get too far without coming to Little Punk People. Did you have fun today? I'm having a lot of fun. This show is awesome. So now this is a family affair, right? You've got yes. everybody involved. Yes, we're a family art collective. It's me. I do um, the paintings and glassware. Um, and I also do vegan and uh, vegetarian cooking videos. Awesome. Um, my son, Elliot, does uh, interviews with bands and celebrities. Right. And um, my husband, Justin, does the um, t-shirt designs, and he also does beer pourings. He matches a uh, craft beer with a metal band. Tell me a little bit more about the beer. <laughs> Those are, uh, he, it all started kind of as like a joke. Right. Um, and now that he put them up on um, YouTube, they actually got muted. So oh. he has to, he still matches it. it. He does. He, he still matches it with a band. He just doesn't play the music. Right. Because it would kind of be like um, that he's advertising for the beer company through the music. So, the music, right, right. but it's, they're, they're really funny. Like one of them, he went to the city to okay. uh, Good Beer, which is uh, his friend Dave owns uh, Good Beer NYC. Very cool. And they did um, like a group one. So yeah. they're, real, they're really fun. I'm George. What is your name? I'm Professor Ouch from the Bizarre Bazaar. Professor Ouch from the Bizarre Bazaar. Where are you from? Well, well the Bizarre Bazaar right now is located on 720 South 5th Street in Philadelphia, right below South, below Bainbridge. And I started years and years ago in the late 70s, early 80s, doing, uh, I worked for a punk rock record label and went from there to working for people and I always was like, hey, I can be as bad a businessman as any of them. And I proved it over and over. I've been selling oddball collectibles since like 1978. Uh, I've been all doing just everything that's been out of the mainstream. So what separates you curating vintage versus like a hoarder? You well, probably get that all the time, especially if you're married. My logic is uh, it's a, you're a hoarder when it's piled up and you don't enjoy it. Yeah. It's not on display. But if you you put it on display and you enjoy it, then you're a collector. And we used to have a, a saying that, you know, one of them is just one thing, a box of them is just a pile of junk. But if you put them in a glass display case, it becomes a collection. And what is the coolest thing you own that you will never part with, that you would yeah. never sell? I mean, I've got stuff that I can't even get rid of them. I've got a two-headed calf 
that's over 120 years old that, that toured on the sideshow for 80 years. I've got, uh, you know, personal mementos from Abdullah the Butcher and wrestlers. I've got original art by, like, Robert Williams and people like that. I love Robert Williams. So, you know, things like that. I mean, I'm married to them, but being a collector, you're never totally married. And again, things change. Again, what used to be on the fringe is now the mainstream. I see here all these people doing arts and crafts, doing their handiwork, doing their small company products that they make, doing collectibles. You know, punk rock. Again, punk rock was cutting edge now. It's almost like classic rock. And there's new stuff, you know, and then 10 years from now, that'll be absorbed by everyone and there'll be something even crazier to upset the parents. So I'm here with Kevin and Cody from Studio House Designs. They are one of my favorite, favorite new artists. I actually specifically came to the Trent Punk Rock Flea Market to buy their Lost Boys print, which they have on sale today. So you guys have done The Witch, yeah. you guys have done The Baba Duke, you've done The Lost Boys, so you do Creep Show. What is one horror movie you would be dying to do a poster of? Big Trouble in Little China. It's not horror, but it's... That's perfect. I grew up on it. I mean, who did it? Who does not love anything, Big Trouble in Little China? John, anything really John Carpenter is what I want to do. Awesome. So what is your favorite scene from a horror movie? I'll let you say that one. Wow, that's rough. I think it's probably uh, Hellraiser getting ripped apart by the hooks. I think that's probably the scene that really got me as a kid and pulled me right into horror. And that was it? Um, yeah. Actually, the one that scared me the most as a kid, believe it or not, was American World in London. Transformation? Oh, wow. No, the first five minutes where he gets his head cut off. Oh, yeah. I was five years old when I first saw it, and I made my dad throw the videotape out the window. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, my and, then I, and then I later rewatched it. Well, so you went out to the street, you dug it out of the gutter. And yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like an antenna take blew it on a couple times for the yeah. VCR. Yeah. See, my parents wouldn't let me watch horror movies as a kid, so I had a completely different experience. They had it, and I literally took the VHS and put it in. They didn't even know I put it in. Right. Now, what is, in your opinion, the best modern horror movie? Best. I like The Witch right now. The Witch is solid. I love The Witch. A lot yeah. of my friends can't stand it, but I thought I like The Witch, too. Um, honestly? I'll probably get a lot of shit for it. I really like the Evil Dead reimagining. I thought it was fun too. I thought it was really respectful to the original movies, and it was just fun. And you know what? It brought us one step closer to Ash first. Exactly. Evil Dead, yeah. Which is, which is awesome. what I really. Which is the, and the the end where it was after the credits and just showed Ash. Was really why I said. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you snap yeah. the whole credits just to hear him say. Right. Punk rock squeak toys. Heck yeah. Heck yeah? <laughs> Do punk rockers yes. like puppies? Uh, they love them. What is your most popular squeak toy? Doctor Who. Doctor Who, can you go grab me it really quick? Oh, it's right here. Doctor awesome. Who. That's your number one squeak toy? One of the most number one, yeah. Um, are you guys biased towards cats? No, we have catnip toys too. We have catnip toys? All the pets. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so what's your name? Pet. Where are you from? Delaware. What is your favorite drink? Favorite drink, beer. What kind of beer? Um, IPAs. All right. Like to try a little bit of everything. Yeah, a lot of people into the IPA nowadays. What is your favorite punk rock band? The Clash. Classic. Favorite Clash song? Favorite Clash song? They change all the time. I know. Uh, London Calling is a good one. That's a good one. Right now, I'm going to currently say Stay Free. All right. Clamp down. What brings you to Punk Rock Flea Market? Um, vending. Cool. And my band's playing the after party. That's awesome. Now, where is the after party tonight? Uh, that's at the Mill Hill Basement. Cool. What's the name of your band? Disaster Committee. Cool. I'm George, this is Hambone. Very nice to meet you. How you doing? How's it going? It's WrestleMania weekend. Are you excited? Well, I'd be a little more excited if I was being inducted in the Hall of Fame like I was supposed to, but I guess I'm going to put off till next year. But they are talking to you about that. That's yeah. something that's definitely going to happen? Uh, I would say next year. Yeah. Awesome. What's your favorite WrestleMania moment? WrestleMania moments. Uh, about when I broke Mr. Perfect's perfect streak in WrestleMania 7. And that was absolutely amazing. Uh, what if, you're, we're here at the Punk Rock Flea Market. Um, why are we, are you punk rock? Would you consider yourself punk rock? I am definitely not punk rock. <laughs> not fucking rock enough for this crowd? But uh, 
I can blend. So I'm here at the Fifth Palm Rock Flea Market with Buddy, and we're taking a look at some awesome taxidermy work. Uh, you can see in the background. Now, do you do all this yourself? Uh, we don't do the actual taxidermy work. A lot of that stuff's vintage. Okay. Uh, we all our bone stuff. We have bone lamps, bone right. furniture, skulls. They're all done in house. Very cool. So this is your first time with the Punk Rock Flea Market? Uh, it, is. it is. Now, how's the response of it? I mean, I feel like a lot of little kids like seeing some of the stuff and going, ah, yeah, it's freaking cool. out. It's, it's awesome, right? Yeah, it's cool. You know, a lot of. Uh, they're learning. Little kids pulling out of snakes. Yeah. Uh, and learn, you know, learn the ins and outs. The closest well. he's ever going to come to a cobra and not yeah. be on the business end of it, right? Yeah, right. Hopefully. Very <laughs> cool. What is the strangest thing you've ever stuffed? Okay. A house cat. Yeah, we did a... It's been a very special cat to somebody. Yeah. They, they wanted, it, it turned out really weird. You know, all yeah. Tax nervous, but, yeah. Uh, you know, we also... We've done a uh, skeleton of a pit bull that turned out pretty good. You know, so... Cool. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Flea Market. We're here with Tommy Coffin. We're in the middle of fucking nowhere. I have no idea. Where are we? Where are we? Are we in Mendham? Sounds good. We're I don't know. We're in the woods. We're somewhere in the woods. We're in the middle of nowhere. We have found the Coffin Cats. Tommy Coffin has just returned to the Coffin Cats after like the longest hiatus ever. This is like Jerry only reuniting with the Misfits. A lot this, less drama. This yeah. is like what other like huge reunion? This is like I don't know. Of it's that like level. Axl Rose getting back together with Guns N' Roses. Yeah, or joining ACDC. Or joining ACDC. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most incredible thing ever. So, where have you been for six years? We've heard rumors. We've heard incredible rumors of where you've been. Everything from like joining the army, Afghanistan, laying carpet down. Like I, I've heard everything. What have you been up to? Went back to normal life for a little bit. Cleaning carpet. Cleaning carpet. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, is that a good like career choice? It, it pays well, but this is this is way better. This has to be a lot more fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Were you cornered by Vic? Like, how did it happen? Like, what what, what was it? Like? I want to know. What was the feeling like? Like, did you have to go crawling back to them? Did they crawl back to you? Was there like, did you guys have to like slash had to set up like an interview through their managers and agents? Was there group therapy? No, he pulled out a bunch of knives and he got me in a corner, just threatening to stab me if I didn't do it. And I was like, ah, didn't really want to be stabbed. So, who does? Not, not that day. Did you see what you were replaced with? I did. It was it was interesting. The last one actually was like straight out of central casting. Like I really think Fink was like, we need like, you know, we gotta go the polar opposite for Tommy, where he gets like J. Crew, Amber Crombie, and Finch model <laughs> to become the guitar player. He was fine. Oh, I yeah. liked it. I'll remember his name. Yeah, what, John. What were your thoughts of the, your predecessors? The, they're both hell of a guitar player as well. Playing your music. It's always weird to hear somebody play shit that I wrote, but... It was a little strange, right? They, they, a little strange, yeah. right? When Pennywise got back together with Jim, like, they, they made an awesome album with Zoli. They won't touch it anymore. Are you never going to play this window song now? No, I mean, I'm open to play anything. Okay. Even if I didn't write it. Have you so added it's, So it's not like a, a Van Hagar situation you got going on? Like, you're, you'll no. get up there and you'll play, is this love? When will it be love? <laughs> right. Some other thing with love because apparently that was like every song Sammy Hagar wrote had love in the title of it. Oh yeah, and they made some awesome shit without right you. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, of course. What was the last album you were on? The green one or no? Uh, Forever for Hire. Forever for Hire, which was the green? No, it's the yellow one. No, it's the yellow one or the green one, the blue one. You know you're like Weezer now. We only know your name, <laughs> your <laughs> album, by the color or the cover. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's fine. You don't remember either, so it works out well. I don't feel dumb. <laughs> Uh, Ian was great too. We liked Ian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ian, we we hand selected together. Yeah, he had a Blaze Bailey and thing where he just disappeared in the middle of the night and they replaced him. That was really strange. Yeah, it was like one day it was Ian and then Ian had like that weird disease and never saw him ever again. He's still alive, right? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Weird disease. Got a girlfriend and moved back to the suburbs. I have no idea. I never asked <laughs> him like talk that. about it. Then he hired the central casting guy and now we got Tommy Coffin back. This might put you on the spot a little bit, uh -oh. but I heard when Vince Neil rejoined Motley Crue. He was no longer a member of the band. He was like the hired Fire. gun contractor getting paid. I think that was the same with like the the, Bla the infamous Black Sabbath Bill Ward contract. That's yes. like the unsignable contract. What's it like? Come on, truth is it? Are you now not? Are you a member of the Coffin yep. Cats again? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You're like there's no like the legal battles have been your managers. You have separate manager representation, of course. Right? Yeah. Of course. Right. Like, millions. Am I right? <laughs> you travel with four different bands. Yeah. Well, mine's the biggest, of course. Of course. And the and the, the bus. 
you know, losing you, I mean, I won't lie, like, it was it was weird, and it was also just, like, the Mohawk thing. They started looking the same. Eric and Vic now look kind of alike. And it was just like, yeah, it was strange. It was like when everybody had to wear the same outfits in, uh, I don't know, whatever band. X-Men? Uh, talk to us. Are you on tour now? What are you guys doing? Right now, we just came out here to play the one-off just for today. Go back home, then, uh... Summer tour? Yeah, we're gonna do, uh... You on the Warp Tour this year? No. <laughs> Stay away from that. Uh, we're gonna do 12 or 13 dates with Reverend Horton Heat over, uh, the end of June. That's awesome. Yeah, that's gonna be killer. Then we'll probably, November, we'll probably do a Northeast run. Just get out there a little bit here and there. Nothing, nothing crazy like it used to be, though. So you used to be the mean one in the band. It's not happening right now. Have you, like, mellowed out in six years? I got old. <laughs> the booze makes me mellow now instead of all. Instead of, instead of like, I think, think I told I told you about it. I don't oh, think yeah. he wants to be hurt. He's going to turn red now. But the last time I saw him in the band, they played this show at a bowling alley that wasn't the Asbury Lanes in Connecticut. Oh, yeah. And him and the lead singer, Vic, went at it on stage. And it was like, you could tell. So wrestling, we're big wrestling, we're big fans. wrestling fans. You could tell when something's like fake and something's real. That was real. So it was a full shoot that night. Oh, it was. It was like I really thought someone was gonna hit each other. It was. It was, it was close. Cause like when they get like surly, sometimes it's like good music. This was bad. And I think you guys played after Sasquatch, so it was already bad. Cause like they like like brought the house down. Oh yeah. There was a lot of booze that night. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you remember that show well. Yeah, we stole a, a cement donkey after it. <laughs> we found it in the woods. We had about 600 pounds. Argued with Eric for about an hour about how we're taking it home. And he's like, no, it's not. It's going to wait on the trailer. We're like, fuck it. No, it's coming with us. And you had that weird, like, bus at the time that I think was damaged at that show. I remember there was a problem with it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Always problem with that There's thing. nothing better than a little alcoholic criminal mixture. Man, my right. Yeah. I still got that donkey in my front yard. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? You know? I can't move it. No. It's the only reason it's in my front yard is because it broke the dolly yeah. on the way to the backyard. So it lives there much. now. Yep. Like, well, oh, this looks good. Well, we're glad to have you back. I appreciate you. you're gonna bring you're gonna bring life back into this group. You know, we'll forgive you for the last album, which you weren't on, but it was it was weird. It was when they went experimental and had keyboards. Um, oh, listen to the Beatles. Uh, that, 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 that's like the thing that you know. But haven't you really started? Well, you know, we want to try to do it. I really started just getting into the Beatles, and I'm sorry, but if you just get into the Beatles like now, oh, yeah. you're, you're, yeah, you're just, you, you, that's jumping the shark. Do my blood, but it's rushing my head. Oh, but it's tonight. Well, I'm better. I'm too bad. Not to care to make my sick. I'm gonna set the world alight. Fuck you. Ooh, I hate you. Oh, sorry. My Mr. F-Bar. Yeah, yeah. Earmuffs. 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 I think the last comic book movie I watched was the uh, part of the Punisher, the, the the third attempt at making a good yeah. Punisher. Oh, I the War Zone. Yeah, War yeah. Zone. War Zone was solid. No, it was stupid. Well, the, the one it was stupid. the portrayal of Punisher on Daredevil was actually really good. I don't. I just. I don't watch comic book movies. Yeah. That's because you're a millennial. But no. millennials don't watch movies or TV or do anything. No, I I, I love watching TV. <laughs> uh, Mad Men was a great show. Madman was an awesome show. That was okay. Uh, it's no Game of Thrones. We're watching now. Uh, Liz and I, we watch uh, Broad City. That's funny. Well, I hear it's a very good show. I've not yeah. seen it, though. Uh, uh, watching that new Stephen King. Uh, that, uh, oh, on Hulu. I hear it's yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, first the, the, the Kennedy excellent. one. Yeah, Kennedy I hear that's one. fantastic. 11, 22, 63. Something like that. In this shot at all? It's good. You know, it, it reminds me, when I was a yeah. kid, you know, you would always... Every six months or so, it seemed like there was a, a Stephen King miniseries. Yeah, yeah, on ABC. Yeah. Like Tommy yeah. Yeah. The Tommy, Tommy Ockers, Ockers, the Langoliers. And like the Shining remake, yeah. Langoliers and yeah. stuff. I always liked that, so it kind of reminds me of, you know, watching that kind of stuff. Speaking of Tommy Knockers, you have Tommy back in the band. Oh, yeah. What's it been like? I know oh. you've been waiting this for this forever. It's oh, like it's the wonderful. This is the Christmas wonderful. surprise that no. took forever to come. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's something where... Uh, when Tommy left, it was uh, it was in his life and for just attitudes in the band. It was kind of like the right time. He had stuff he had to take care of, and uh, Eric and I wanted to keep pressing on. 
with the touring and all that. And the whole thing in this band has been, hey, who are we to keep you from living your life? You know, like it's a lot. It's hard work being on the road nine months out of the year at that at that time of touring. So, you know, it was like Tommy's was, has been my best friend for a long time, has always been. Um, you know, even when he wasn't in the band, and I was like, "Go do your thing, man." And you know, so we had other guys come in and fill the spot, and it was always told to him like, "When you're ready to come back, you just let me know." And so. Uh, you know, recently he was like, ah, I'm thinking about coming back in the band. I said, okay, cool, you're, so you're coming back. I didn't even give him a choice. Yeah. I was like, ah, yeah. you're, you're coming back. Okay, cool. Well, that's good. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'll let John know that, hey, Tommy's coming back. And he was like, well, I still got to think about it. I was like, there's nothing to think about. There's people waiting for you to come back. Wait, so. did you sign a contract before you fire John? <laughs> nah, no contract. It wasn't like a Blaze Bailey type thing where he disappeared in the middle of the night. We don't do any contracts or anything like that. If you don't want to play in the band, you don't have to play in the band. I mean, I heard you reached <laughs> out to Slash, and nothing it came. Oh out of shit! It. I mean, yeah, if Slash wanted to play, Tom would be gone in a second. <laughs> Shit. Everyone's replaceable, folks. Yeah, we actually did an episode two weeks ago of replacement singers and like great replacement singers over time, like such as Brian Johnson and is that the name? Dio. Yeah. Dio and, and Bruce Dickinson. Well, those guys have a, such a distinct. Well, I don't know about Brian Johnson. He, you know, with the, it was kind of like the we're looking for somebody to sound like us again. But when you bring in like a Dio, you know, or Bruce Dickinson, it's such a distinct difference. It's 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 like a refreshing of the band. So who are you gonna be replaced by? Uh, maybe a ch maybe a chick. <laughs> oh, you know? okay. That I mean, would be... really got to reach outside of the box. I mean, try a, that. There's, a, there's a ton of short guys with deep voices out there. So, you know, maybe, you know if the guys get rid of me, then... we're not in short supply. Yeah. So what now? You're bringing a new album. You go on tour. Hamble, did you try to say something that cut you off? That's, That's usually okay. what happens. You go. I don't have enough alcohol. In it's me. your time. Well, I have yeah, plenty of alcohol time, in me. Next time we come back, we're gonna have to plan out the whole Mai Tai thing. Yeah, yes, we absolutely. will do that. We will yeah. get you into the tiki bar, and we will like. I'd love if I had an ability to make people play. If you go acoustic, we can do it. Like, I hate playing acoustic. I can only imagine you play. You play an upright bass, like. Well, you know, what, speaking of no. the upright bass, I gotta tell you, and I'm gonna say something to you that I've never said to another upright bass player in my life. You got a perfect tone. Oh. Your tone is like. It's perfect. Hey, I it's make my own pickups. He does make no, his own pickups. <laughs> you do. No, you know, it, it, <laughs> I will tell you this. I finally, after all this time, I am absolutely happy with, uh, absolutely happy with my tone. And you know what? I say that now, but maybe next week I'll be like, fuck, nothing sounds right. But it's an ongoing no, journey. Based on and, based on, it's an ongoing journey. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, I get it. I, I've spent so much money on gear strings, pickups, everything, and you would be in love with it for a month, and then a month later yeah, you're like, it, oh god, I, I don't but know why I ever it, all it takes, All it takes is for me to be on tour and to get a succession of rooms that just don't sound good, yeah. and I'll think it's my amp, and then I'll jack with everything, yeah. and then I'll actually get in good rooms, and I go, ugh. Yeah. yeah back and forth, back and forth. But. Well, I mean, like, in fairness, we were in a tent outdoors today at a car show in Medford. In Medford. We finally figured out where we are. We're in Medford, New Jersey. And it was, dude, your tone was fantastic. Yeah, you guys sounded really good for being in the tent. Way better than seeing you on a skate well, park. Uh, well, these days, there, there was an era where, you know, and I hate to say it, but there was an era where drinking uh, and getting fucked up before the show was more important than looking at what the tone knob sounded Yeah. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, I it, it, around the time that Tommy was leaving and it, it, it was a turning point, the band were like, shit, there's more people paying money to see us. Like, it's not a joke anymore. Like, uh, people are paying money to see us. We really should sound good and really should focus on sounding good. And so, Focus on sounding good. I, uh, we try to at least. You know, great. I, mean. I, was, I was telling him, favorite time seeing you guys was when you played Asbury Lanes and you played for three and a half hours and played every song you've ever done and every cover you ever did. It was about like four or five years ago. I remember it was Allison's birthday and it went till three in the morning. I think we tapped out. So that was probably the time where you didn't care about tone. I also probably don't think you remember that show. No. Let me tell you something about Asbury Lanes. <laughs> Dude, change your belts, bro. <laughs> uh, no, Asbury Lanes, I love Asbury Lanes, and the bartenders, the staff, they're all great and way too friendly with how they pour the shots. And, uh, Jen, he's looking at you. Yeah. Allegedly. I miss you. Uh, Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs, Jaeger bombs, Jaeger bombs, Jaeger bombs, Jaeger bombs, Jaeger bombs. That was, uh, man, 
that is, if you want to see us play for four hours, that's how you get us to play for four hours. Uh, we might play songs over and might not know where we're at by the time we're done, but that's how you do that. Maybe that's Springsteen's uh, secret of playing four hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. It's a pleasure, always. Yeah. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. You yeah. have your fans are waiting. Yeah. We're in a and, uh, next, uh, next, when I know I'm coming out here, I'll bring, I have a tiki cup. It's got a little trunk and head on it. I'll bring that. Do it? Yep. Thank you so much, dude. Go, you have adoring fans. <laughs> We're going to close out the show thank really quickly. Because this is the best spot to go. Leave. Yeah, yeah. Go away. We're in front of Squindo's van. We're in front of the Squindo van. That was our first touring episode. I hope you love it. I hope you enjoyed the Brutus the Barber Beefcake interview because it was horrible. That one with Vic was much better. Horribly awesome. How can I reach you, Hambone? You can find me on Twitter at Hambreaker, on Periscope at Hambreaker as well. Uh, Unwinnable.com for my other podcast, I the Beer Holder, where we talk about Dungeons and Dragons and get real drunk while we do it. I'm George. You can find me at cultofgeorge.com where I write about all kinds of stupid crap. Find me on Twitter and on and on uh, Twitter and on Instagram at GOK Creative. You can find me on Periscope and Cult of George, though we're probably gonna do Facebook Live more because it's better. It's kind of better. So much better. I think Vic had the right idea. Google it. That's Google how you can it. find us. My Thai TV. We're on MyTaiTV.com if you want to see the whole archive. We rocked it. Dude, yes. happy birthday, Hambone. Happy birthday to me. This Thanks is My Thai TV. Aloha. Серой болью всю душу свело, кокаина серебряной пыли. I see you guys vandalizing that thing. Dude, you know, they need to pay money for that. <laughs> I'm capturing you live on Facebook Live, like defacing, like <laughs> property. This is amazing. Oh, you're kind of famous. Keep doing it. Hi, how are you? Good. How you are look you? lovely with your new pink blue hair. Oh, thank you. Did you have that last week? Uh, I was tired. That's alright. I was hungry. I've had diarrhea for like two days. It's been weird. That's Can we interview you after this? Can we just get you on the show when you have that tiki mug ready? Now we gotta get you guys to come up to Mai Tai TV. This is like the really bad half-assed version of it. This is the live uh, show version. That is an amazing Monty you're doing there. It had to fit the spot. I need a bigger marker. You know, this is like not even a misdemeanor. This is like a full-blown felony right here, dude. Rich rock band, you're fucked. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna let you guys all go now. We're gonna say hi happy birthday to Hambo one more time. Bye bye.